John is my name. Let's make Saji my lab instructor. Sure, why not? I see a capital K, and it ain't Kelvin. Capital K for us, 95% of the time, if it's not Kelvin, is equilibrium constant. Products over reactants. Products over reactants for what? Well, the subscript often tells us what to do. If the subscript is A, that's an acid reaction, giving up a proton. If the subscript is B, that's taking a proton. If the subject, or the subscript rather, is SP, that is not South Philadelphia. That is solubility product. Which means I need to take a solid and dissolve it as its ions. This is the way that solubility product is defined. So it will always take this form. Not everything in the world is ionic, but this is one that's defined for dealing with the ones that are. Once I have a balanced equation, products over reactants always takes the same form. What do I do? Leave out liquids and solids. Good. In this case, I have a solid, which you always will for solubility product. Um, and coefficients become exponents. Coefficients are 1. So exponents are 1. I get an equation with three variables. That's at least too, too many. But I was told what KSP equals, right? The value of KSP is that. Now I got two variables. Most common trick when we're doing equilibrium, and I have more, than, more variables than I can deal with, is, yeah, ice table. There are a couple of ways you can approach deciding what chemicals to put in your ice table. I really like the idea that everything that's in products of a reactants goes in the ice table, because those are what affects equilibrium. How much lead in pure water? Yeah, hopefully none. In our drinking water, it actually is zero. It's below the detection limit, which is good. How much sulfate? Yeah, in the real world, some, but we're going to say zero. Very small. Uh, changes get x. Pluses or minuses? Pluses, good. Can't go below zero, plus I'm allowing something to dissolve. Zero plus x is x, zero plus x is x. Equilibrium row goes in there. Um, some textbooks will use S here. I'm a fan of you doing fewer things. We're using fewer letters to represent the exact same thing. So I stick with X. If you prefer S, that's fine. To two sig figs, I have 10 to the minus fourth, right? One, two, three, four. Yep. Molar solubility is nice in that. X is the answer. X is always the molar solubility. If you are asked about molar solubility. Slap some units on there, circle it, drop the mic, flip the table, walk out and go home. Wait, there's a question for it. Do it after that. Somebody was real frustrated in lab. This was about the week before, I think, last. And they wanted to flip the table, but in lab they're bolted to the floor. It just means we need a tool. We can still flip it. We just need. Let's give you some points. Questions about molar solubility in pure water? Questions about um, basically like what's between these two and confirming, do I square root both sides? Yes, I do. Um, you can either think about square rooting both sides, you can think about raising both sides to the one half power, which I guess is more general, but yes, exactly right. If I square root these, I wind up with x. 
and a number. Do you mean like the pH one? Yeah. yeah, so the question for safe fix, do we use the pH rule where all the safe fix come after the decimal place? Only if you're given a pH, which sometimes you are. On, the, on one of the ones that we did yesterday, you were, but here you're not. So here I would say use the regular rules for, for Okay. Batteries are not pure water. They are nasty. This is why you cannot throw an automotive battery in the trash, because it's 4.5 molar sulfuric acid. Solubility of, I didn't even put it in there, of lead 2 plus. In 4.5 molar H2SO4. Do you have a KSP for H2SO4? Could you look it up? I mean, maybe, but on the quiz, I'm not going to correct you And the exam, I'm not either. So you don't need it. But frame it another way. My answer will take the form of a concentration of lead 2 plus. Therefore, I must solve an equation that has that in it. Uh, what equation that have we recently seen that has the concentration of lead 2 plus in it? Yeah, the KSP for lead, the last one. Good. So let's use that. Bless you. You can approach this two ways. You can say ice table, and that will work just fine. If x is small, which it will be. You can also say, I want PB2 plus to be the only variable. If I had the concentration of sulfate, SO4 to minus, I would have an equation with one variable, and I would be happy about that. Let's do it the ice table way, but you'll see it simplifies to that second way. What chemicals do I put in my ice table? Whichever ones are in products over reactants. How much lead in 4.5 molar sulfuric acid? Not none. How much sulfate in 4.5 molar sulfate? Yeah, 4.5. This is really common in solubility, and solubility, your Q is pretty much always either the words solubility, precipitate, or KSP. Um, this is really common, where you're given some background information that at first seems maybe not so relevant, but it contains one of the ions that's in your chemical. Both coefficients are one, both are gonna get bigger. You think X is small? Yeah. Divide both sides by 4.5. Questions or thoughts? Did I make it wrong? 
Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Say again? So why did I scribble out the X? Because it's small. Now, on the last exam, I was pain. Maybe for more than one reason. But I asked you to confirm whether X was small. How would you do that here? Plug it in where? Yeah, so plug it, all of this is true. I'm just asking for more detail. So the, the response was plug it in. I said plug it in where? They said to the equation. This is all true. Um, the quickest way to do it is to plug it in here where I scratched it out and ask if, if 4.5 plus x is actually still 4.5. Let's punch that in the calculator. My calculator says the answer is 4.500003. It's two sig figs. 4.5. X was small. H plus? I would say yeah, because I don't know what to do with it. What do you want to do with H plus that you can't do? Why did I put it there? Because that's what it is. You can't buy sulfate, right? You buy sodium sulfate, you buy sulfuric acid. Where should I put it? So should you break down H2SO4 into H plus and SO4? Yeah, sure. But then I, I have H plus in solution, and it's there. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? This is a perfectly valid question. Most people are not brave enough to ask me why I'm the way I am. Now, depending on how deep you want to go, that's no. Um, because I grew up in a slither. No. Why why ask about battery acid? Instead of saying, giving you the concentration of sulfate. What? Yeah, it's real world. When you get to, well, so what, what so who's a bio major? You gonna take micro? <laughs> um, if you need to make a medium, a growth medium for your microbes, then you need phosphates. PO4 3 minus, let's say, for your growth medium. You're going to go to the shelf and pick out the PO4-3 minus? Nope. You're going to pick out some salt of it. So this is a real world context, and you, you, you can come at this from a, either a, I try to choose real relevant examples that will interest you, or this is what you're going to have to do when you get to the next thing. So who's, who's done the buffer lab so far, anybody? Did you dissolve acetate, or did you have to get a solution of some other, did you have to, what did you weigh out? Sodium acetate trihydrate. So this idea of getting accustomed to what, uh, how you do things, I guess I would say, is, is what we're trying to build. Please. How do I get the KSP for question four? This is key. This is a really good question. This is really important. What chemical did I need a KSP for for question four? Lead to sulfate, PBSO4. For a given temperature, which is how we will operate, KSP is always the same for any given molecule. And it's also true for a pKa. If I give you a pKa for phosphoric acid, that's the pKa for phosphoric acid in any number of questions. Here, lead sulfate is always lead sulfate. So anytime you use it, it has the same KSP.
to go back to the question of where do the protons go for H2SO4, I would approach these, and really, to the extent possible, everything in this course, from like starting from the answer and working backwards to figure out what I need to do. If I need a concentration of lead 2 plus, I need a an equation that has that in it. I found one. All I need to answer this question is what goes in that equation. So I can have protons in solution, but I don't currently need it. That will go a really long way. Other thoughts, other questions? How many quizzes do you think we should drop this semester? I need more hands. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter will be like, hey, I really like that French toast. Do you know how many thumbs up it gets? I'm like, no, no, you know. You think, you think it'd be 10, but no, she goes, hang on. She goes, hey, wait, wait. 20 thumbs up. What? Oh, I do. Yeah. Anyone who likes my French toast is <laughs> true. 20, yeah, hey. Hey. By the end of the semester, you will have taken negative three quizzes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. All right. Let's look at iLearn. An updated syllabus. Why would I do such a thing? Because we moved exam two. Why? Because you asked me politely. That's how we get things done in this world. You either have leverage or you ask politely. All right, so on, as of today, I posted an updated syllabus for exam two is moved to November 6th, the, the Wednesday following what it was, so that you can register for courses competitively. Screw that, we're here to win. You want to beat all those business meetings, registration, whatever. Whatever it is, whatever it is you guys do. Uh, let's see, CLC times are here. Now is a real good time to go. Because, you know, exam coming up. Um, oh, online help forum. Not too many people. This comes and goes. Some semesters people really like this and some they don't. I don't really mind either way. But you will get an answer much faster here than if you email me. I will try to respond to every email. Apologize if I miss it. But this will be faster if you have a question. A lot of times people use it for lab. So they'll say, like, how would I rearrange KEQ to be linear? That was the equilibrium constant lab. And we talk about it here. Um, the reason this is faster is because that's my home page, because I'm a nerd. This is my, every time I start up a browser, this is what I see. So if you ask, ask stuff here, it will be answered more quickly. Again, I'm not offended if something else works better for you, but this is a good way to get it answered. Okay. Okay. Um, where are we? Let's see. We did these videos, maybe. I did them. Um, so we're up through there. For next week's discussion and lecture, you want these ones. Thermodynamics. And then, they're not up yet. I'll put them up probably by the end of, well, by the end of tomorrow. Um, the following ones, so those are for chapter 12. That's not on exam two. Be clear, it is not on exam two, but it's coming before exam two because I didn't know what else to do with prep for exam two is a new date and still get everything done on time. Just be clear. So, so what's not on exam two? Chapter 12, which is solutions, collative properties, things that are not currently up, which should be by the end of the week. Not on exam. Exam two is content remains the same. Maybe that's the reason. So how do you know which ones to watch? I think the cleanest way is to do is to go to the syllabus and figure out what we're doing each week. I'm very much open to suggestions because this is the first time we're structuring the course this way. Yeah. So the the question is, I watched next week's videos because they were under this week. Yeah. I can do it differently. Either way is going to confuse somebody. So, um, I'm, so, but that said, I am very much open to what is the best way to structure this. Tell me, because this is the first time we're doing this, right? So, give, 
that's good feedback. Even better feedback is this is what would have made it super clear for me, which you can do by email or office hours or whatever. The way to do it for now, I guess always, is to pull up the syllabus and say, well, other than saying things that aren't funny, what are we going to do that week? And today is the 16th. We're going to talk about solubility and then go watch those videos. So that's the way to like, I know it's kind of a steppy process, but that's the way to always be sure. But please do give me feedback on like, this is how the video should be oriented or whatever, because I need it. Okay. Exam two, acid base, buffer, solubility, thermodynamics. Yep. Here's the practice exam from spring 17, I think it was. Delta H, delta S, did we do that yet? Only the person who watched next week's videos is prepared to do that one. So let's skip it for now. This is how you might practice if you were doing the practice exams more than just right before the exam. Bunch of things we haven't heard of. Delta G, we didn't do that yet together. What concentration of barium hydroxide, a strong base, would give a solution with a pH of 11.88? Wait a minute. We did that. So I want to find a solubility practice, because let's say I just watched, let's say I watched the videos that I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to watch, and I'm speaking in quadruple negatives because I'm tired, because I got like, what do you sign up for, like 19 units now? What do, they, what do they tell the kids to sign up for these days? A fair few units, that's how many. Um, so you're busy. How do you find the questions you want to practice right now? Let's say you say, all right, man, I got behind, or I watched the wrong videos, or whatever, but I'm going to catch up now, so I'm going to watch all the solubility videos. Then I want to practice before it leaves my head. I want to drill it in a little bit. Let's find one. PKA, is that solubility? No. Uh, Lewis basis, Lewis acid, solubility? No. PKAs. Listen. If your seawater samples, what is the molar molar solubility? I should turn out. I should have like a microphone duck button for getting excited. Need a limiter. I see molar solubility. Therefore, I know I can practice my solubility. What do you see? Uh, yeah, I see molar solubility. I see a seawater sample, blah, 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 extra information, sodium chloride. I only see one KSP. For me, I don't, I don't like to be prescriptive, though it's possible it'd be more useful if I were, but it's, not, it's against my nature. I strongly recommend writing the balance equation in products of reactants as soon as you see an equilibrium constant because you will almost assuredly use it. And usually that will save you a bunch of time trying to figure out what you do need to use. Because of that subscript SP solubility product, the form will take a solid dissolves as its ions. <coughs> Once I have a balanced equation, I can do products over reactants. I have a value. Oops. Can I fix this? Almost. Whatever.
let's do this scenario where you're doing this practice exam and you have forgotten how to do this. Happens. How will you know where to go to find out? You can look at Muller's liability, I guess. Man, if only he had done videos that were tagged by the content. Yeah, so you can look at the Muller solubility video. This one actually is the next one. So in this case, it would take you a little bit more time to check through. Um, common ion, I don't really like that phrase, but it is what people call it, so we kind of have to do it. That means that there is an ion in common between the solution, chloride, oops, and your chemical, lead chloride. That is the common ion. It is the ion in common between the two. Why am I doing an ice table? Because I got too many variables. What's the concentration of lead in 0.55 molar NaCl? Yeah, zero. Do you include the two in the ice table? I do not. The two will show up in just a second. But the way I view this, I was talking with, with someone about this yesterday. Um, products over reactants with coefficients as exponents is what it is. Whatever the concentration of chloride is goes in there and gets squared because those are the rules for products over reactants. The two shows up where? In the change, yeah, in the change row. Nice. Do I have a so do I have any chloride in my seawater? Yes. Yeah, how much? Yeah, 0.55, good. I have 0.55 molar sodium. Analogous to the protons in the quiz, what do I do with it? Nothing. That's right. They used to remember the German woman who would say, it doesn't care. When she, was, when she meant to say, it doesn't matter. What do we do with the sodium? It doesn't care. I do a really bad Schwarzenegger accent. And she would ask me what accent I was doing. It's great. <laughs> okay. He was governor at the time. I have a diploma signed by him. Yeah. Schwarzenegger's autograph. Everybody gets an X. But now we need the coefficients. How many leads in lead chloride? One. How many chlorides in lead two chloride? That's where the two goes. Pluses or minuses? Yeah, they're products, so they got to get pluses because we're making products. What? What are you thinking? So here we have all the products as plus. If we had reactants here, which we don't because they're all solids, but if we had reactants, would they be negative? Usually. You need something to anchor which way the reaction is going to shift. If you can find a zero, that's what I do. Zeros have to increase, and then I can get the direction from there. But if products are increasing, reactants have to decrease. Well, is X small? Yeah. Good, that'll save time. Even though there's two of them? Yep. question was, or will we always assume that x is small and cross it out? Um, for the purposes of exams, 
x will be small. And when do you cross it out? Because I crossed out one x, but I crossed out the, the two x there, the minus two x, but I left the x that was by itself. Why? What's the distinction? Was it? Yeah, when you have an x like plus x or a minus x, that's when you cross it out. You say the change in addition is small, but multiplying it's a big deal. If you multiply my salary by 0 0.001, I will be very angry. But if you subtract 0 0.001 dollars, I won't even notice. Yep, square 0.55, divide both sides by whatever that is, and that's x. Yep. Okay. For an exam, might I ask you to prove that x is small? Not sure, I guess so. I view that as like an equilibrium chapter kind of thing. So on exam two, I don't think I will, but I, it's... It's game. I mean, they're not meant to be cumulative. I won't purposefully go dig out a kinetics thing to ask you here. Um, X is small. You should know how to do that, but I probably won't make time for it on the exam. Would it show up in the final? Sure, why not? Yeah, final is everything. To evaluate whether x is small, plug it into somewhere that you scratched it out and see if that was an okay approximation to the number of sig figs you had. It should be all right here. Not by much. It should be okay. If x is not small, do I want you to solve it again, not on an exam? No. Yeah, for, right. For our purposes, I just want to say no, that was not a good approximation. Yeah, keep going. <coughs> Should we bring back quadratic formula? No. No, no. no. no I agree with you. Yeah. We got math majors for that sort of thing. They gotta have something to do. That's right. So if x is not small, I just want you to state, yeah, x was not small, or whatever the bubble in the thing. Yeah, if x is not small, that's the extent of what we're going to do with it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. If you find that the concentration of lead 2 plus is 3 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar for the solution for question 8, do you expect a precipitate to form? Someone told me they watched the videos on like 1.75 to 2x speed, so I tried to talk like that in the discussion. It was really hard. I feel like I already talked fast, but I guess I can't keep up with the brain. Uh, like tracking issue. You ever have a VCR where you can adjust the tracking and make like the audio go a little bit faster or slower than the people speaking? Probably. I think there's a VCR here, actually. It was. What do I do? I see the word precipitate, so I'm still in solubility land. How do I evaluate whether there will be a precipitate? What are the conditions where precipitation starts, I guess, is the right word?
What's our balanced equation? What does it really mean to do and it, to say this reaction is at equilibrium? So when you did the equilibrium constant lab, you had iron, you added thiocyanate, which is fun or hard to say depending on your point of view, and it made this pretty red color, and you waited a little bit and you said it's at equilibrium, which means that the balance isn't changing. You got some reactants, you got some products, but they're not net, there's no net change in them. What does that mean in this case? There's no net change in the amount of solid and the amount of dissolved ions, what does it mean to be at equilibrium? Is there a solid? This one is like you're right on the border. When this is true, when the concentrations of lead 2 plus multiplied by the concentration of sulfate equals KSP, you are at the point where there will be a precipitate. If you add any more of either of those, there's a precipitate. If you take away <coughs> any amount of either of those, there is not a precipitate. When those concentrations equal K, that's the precipitate. When this equation is true, what's Q? Yeah, Q is that, except where you are right now. Well put. Whatever the concentrations are, right now. Whatever conditions you're told, whatever you're looking at. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was told a concentration of lead right now. I put sulfate, it's chloride, isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking about the quiz. Maybe, I should, maybe I'll cut that part from the video on YouTube, make it look like I know what I'm doing. No, I'll be honest. I'm up front. Felix the house cat says, imperfection is perfection. I have a concentration of lead. Do I have a concentration of chloride? From the solution from question eight. Yes, I do. Yeah. I have evaluated my conditions right now. I was told what lead was. I was told to go find the fluoride. I said sulfate again. Right? Is that nine or four? I think it's nine. Did I do it right? Nine. Is that worse? That's worse. No, no, it's much worse. Okay, there. Yeah, it's nine. Thank you for asking. What would that answer be? Well spotted. This is not the form of my answer. I often like to start with that. <clears throat> Do you expect a precipitate to form? 9.1. No, that's not the form of the answer. So how do I get to the answer from there? I have a Q. I have a Q. Compare Q and K. Compare Q and K. What was K? K was 5.89 times 10 to the minus fifth. So 
Yeah, so customers, would you put KSP? Yeah, it's, te it's technically. Um, it's still a K, like K isn't wrong. If you don't put KSP, I won't be mad. If you just put K, that's fine. But yeah, if you want to bookkeep it right. For some reason, you don't see QSP though. I don't know why. At least I haven't seen it. Should, but you don't. Q blank K. Less than, equal, greater than. Q is greater than K. Q is greater than K. I have too many what? Products or reactors? Products. I have too many products. I have too many dissolved ions. What are they going to do? Precipitate. Yeah. Yes, you will see a precipitate. Uh, remember, did anyone do that thing in public school, like I did, where the alligator eats the number that's bigger? Did you do an alligator? Yeah. Alligator? Pac-Man? You want to know one of those for this? You don't do enough fun stuff like that for chemistry. You want to know one? The alligator, if you do Q versus K, Q comes first, the alligator eats in the direction the reaction will shift. Which way is the alligator eating? Left. That's the way the reaction will shift. It will shift left to make more reactants. In this case, they're solids, so you'll see a precipitate. Where is that on the spectrum of like useless to just dumb enough to remember and actually be useful? Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I like that one. So if it doesn't work for you, you can always ask, Q is too big, I have too many products. Like that will always work. So then if Q is greater, then there's more reactants, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you have it the other way, you have too many reactants, more will dissolve. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Good, good, good. Let's reframe the entire semester of Chem 111 in terms of what alligators will do. How's that? Mercury marine science, saltwater crocodiles. Not messing with one of those. I'm just saying, oh man. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's any other ways I could ask this. Is there any other way I could ask you, will there be a precipitate? Will a precipitate form? Q versus K is very common. Um, you remember the vocab associated with this? So if the solution has exactly the right amount dissolved, it's called saturated. The solution is had it up to here, and we'll take no more. If it is saturated. If it has too much, do you remember what that's called? Super saturated. Supersaturated means it will precipitate until it's saturated. If it's undersaturated, more could dissolve. Yeah. Is this supersaturated? Yes. Yep. This is super. So I haven't framed the question this way, but yes, exactly. I could say that. Is the is the reaction supersaturated, saturated, or undersaturated? You would say super. How would I know? How would I know this is super saturated? Q is greater than K. I got too many ions in the solution. So, Q is greater than K. Yeah. And then they say when Q would be saturated. When would it be saturated if Q equals K? If you are right at the point where precipitation is just right there, that's Q equals K. Yep, good question. It's like, it's like you guys are looking at the thing that's on the screen. Is the solution saturated, undersaturated, or supersaturated? We said super 
super saturated. That's the acid base stuff? Uh, it's like diagram. Oh, wait, actually, you might not be able to do yet. Yeah, so we haven't done two, but. Yeah, it's, I, guess, I guess we'll wait. We can do this if you want. It's not too bad. You want a preview of next week? What do we do? So tell me then. Yeah, what, what do I do? What's more stable if a reaction is spontaneous? Reactants or products? Products are more stable because they're spontaneously formed. All right, we'll do that next week. Yay. Yay. What concentration of barium hydroxide to strong base will give a solution of pH 11.88? What do you see? I see a pH, so I'm in acid base land most likely. Strong base, that's my biggest cue. That's one of the subcategories of acid base. Hydroxide is the only strong base we work with in water, and only the first two columns have the salts of strong bases for us. Half pH, want barium hydroxide. So to get to pH, I'll get there from pOH. How will I get pOH? That's how I get between the two, but how am I going to get hydro uh, pOH in the first place? Yeah, exactly. POH is negative log of OH. Exactly. So if I had OH, I could do that. And this is the 14. A couple people said that. That's good. But I don't want OH minus. I guess I'm drawing the arrows in the wrong direction. But these go both ways. Again, I don't have hydroxide. How am I going to get between hydroxide and barium hydroxide? Yeah, balance equation, stoichiometry, depending on what you want to call it. Exactly. Good. Please try this. Please try this. We will reconvene in a few minutes. Let's
Anybody want to do it? I can put my hand on it, right? It won't. Okay. So then, oh, Wait, no. Go to draw and pick the black hand. Where's draw? Top. And so. Before I had this computer, I used to use a sharpie, like a marker on the whiteboard. And then one day I came to the back of the room and I was like, I can't read this. And this young woman was sitting there was like, yeah, I can't either. I was like, you, you've got to tell me. Then we fixed it. And that's still true. If you're sitting in the back and you can't read my handwriting, do ask for about the numbers. And if it's general, let me know and we'll fix it. We fix things that are not working right. If you want the videos organized a different way, we fix it. But you got to tell me how you want it to fix it. From the exam moves, sometimes we Okay, it moved up. I don't know what I did. Yeah, it's okay. I think I can move it for you more, but you got Django. John, come back. John, come back. John. Bro, I don't know what to do from here. Then what would be on the BA? Because you're saying that you're saying that that, that part was there, right? So then, what would be the the BA two plus? solve everything, where would you go from here? So okay, so we got to hydroxide, and then we have the balanced equation from which we can extract the stoichiometry, the molar ratio, however you want to think about it, to get from hydroxide to barium hydroxide. I like to do a unit conversion because then I can, I don't put the numbers in the wrong place. I may double negative that. So this is hydroxide. Let's rewrite this 
here. And I like to include the chemical as part of the units for molar, because molar doesn't mean that much unless you know it's molar of what. What do I put where? Good. Is that right? Somebody calculator that and see if I'm right. I think I got it. No, I did it the wrong way. 'Cause it's got a PKA. So weak. Do 
Use the Jonagon. That's not bad. That's growing on me. I don't know what it means yet, but it's growing on me anyway. Jonagon. I can hear, I know exactly what my daughter is going to say. Daddy, that's silly. Can I bring her? Yeah, she has off from school Monday. Maybe I'll bring her in then. Wait, wait, wait. What am I going to do? Her give lecture? She does like running the show. She'll tell you what to do. She'll call you for morning circle time and tell you the morning announcements and stuff. Oh yeah. They're learning to write. So we have this like these old whiteboard at home. And she writes the morning announcements and leaves blanks but needs help doing it. So she's like, Daddy, how do you spell good? Like G O O D. She writes G blank blank blank. Like, student looking at me. Would you like to complete the word? That's what happens. Okay. What would she say to do here? She would probably say ice table, yeah. No, I'd probably not. But yeah, even I would do an ice table because that's what's usually the way to get to the weak acids and bases. Um, if you remember that, great. If you don't remember that, the way you will figure that out is you'll get KA and like products of a reactant. So I have too many variables. I need to pull a trick. Ice table is really long we got. What equation do I use if I have a weak acid or a Ka? Put another way, do you know the formula for ascorbic acid? No. no. So I'm going to use HA. Ha. <laughs> How reacts with Hato? To make throw plus. That's not that's getting worse. And A minus. That one's okay. We can say that. Someone volunteered a suggestion that we could consider using Henderson Hasselbach. I would suggest we don't. You can, but I think that's doing it the hard way. Why would I say don't use Henderson Hasselbach here? Because Henderson Hasselbach is four. Buffers, and to have a buffer, I must have what in solution? Both HA and A minus, the acid and the conjugate base. If I just have a solution of weak acid, I stay with something faster. Uh, I don't have the number for KA. What's up? Yeah, I gotta get it. From what, though? Yeah, from the PKA. Good, good, good. So I'll move the negative sign, then do 10 to the, and I wind up with KA equals 10 to the negative 4.10. Well, I'll put this down here. So, if you remembered that an ice table is what you do, great, do an ice table. If you get here and, and you're like, okay, I got the fundamentals. I remember, I always do balance equation, I always do products over reactants, but then I'm not sure what to do. I get here, and I say, I got way too many variables. That's probably your, the, the like, roundabout view that's actually like, probably a more correct to provide you an ice table. I got 7.94, though please do confirm. <laughs> Yeah, cool. All right, let's get let's get icy. What goes in an ice table? Everything that's in products of a reactants.
Um, what do I know? Yeah, I know the reactants. I was told I have a one molar solution of ascorbic acid, which is HA. We'll go with zeros for these. Um, everybody gets an X for change. That's how I consolidate variables. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, all the coefficients are one, because all the coefficients in the balance equation were one. But what about the pluses and the minuses? Yeah, it's got to be plus plus for the products, because it can't go below zero. If the products are getting higher, the reactants have to be going down, so they get a minus. Let's put this into Ka. Is X small? Sure, why not? Multiply both sides by one. Take the square root. I might even save time and not multiply by one. Feeling saucy. so many bad jokes I lost track of what I wanted. I wanted the expected pH. So that means I care about H3O plus. Good thing that is X. Okay, good. So that's molar of H3O plus. I can remember my Jonagon or square of knowledge if you prefer. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what, people who walked out after that quiz are going to be sorry they missed that. Their lives are incomplete. <laughs> I'm going to be chuckling about that. The whole like, rest of the week, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go, <laughs> and people are going to be like, what are you, what are you laughing about? That's inappropriate. I'll be like, no, but it's a, it's a thing from class. OK. Uh, two sig figs, I believe. Two sig figs or three sig figs? Two, because I had two in my PKA. Uh, I would like your questions and thoughts. Acids, if that's your thought. I want to do a buffer question that I assure you will be on exam two and the final. Why? Again, because it's what you will do if you are a science major at CSUMB, which you are, most likely. Almost everyone here will be. Not that one. Citric acid has the following acid base equilibrium PKAs. If you're writing this down, probably you don't want to copy the whole equilibrium. Look at the PKAs. 6A, please circle the two chemicals you would use to make a buffer at pH 5.00. This type of thing will be on exam two and final. This is a two step process in my mind. pH 5. What do I do? So I choose to take it. Okay, so the middle one there, that middle equation with a whole bunch of numbers and stuff I don't want to pronounce, has the pKa that's closest to 5. The pKa that's closest to the desired pH tells you about HA. <laughs> 
circle the two chemicals. That's HA. The closest thing to A, like I said, find the closest thing to A to the pH you want, that's HA in the reactant. Because that's the chemical that you're going to find. If you know HA, how will you find A minus? Yeah, it has one fewer proton, one less H on it. Good. Done. How many people will take either organic and, and or biochem? Not a good sense. Organic and or biochem. People will be like, be proud of it. Um, you're going to compare PKAs a lot. Questions about part A first? Can I run through one more time? Um, yeah. When you have to pick two chemicals, find the pKa that is closest to your desired pH. That tells you which chemical is HA. Circle it. Then tell yourself, well, A minus, that has one less H, and go find the chemical that has one less H. So could you, as, as frames, could the A minus be like the products of that? Yeah, that's fine, because it's the same chemical. Yeah. That's okay with me, as long as you identify the right chemicals. Yeah. Um, if you look through the practice exams, you'll see this written out a bunch of different ways. So in general, find the PKA, because that's HA, then find A minus, and then, and then go like decide where they are and then guess that I get in. If I asked for pH 4, I wouldn't ask for pH 4 because that's pretty much right in between two of those. So I will try to give you one that's unambiguous. If I ask for pH 3, you're going to find a different chemical for HA, then whatever that is, find its A minus. Um, I will try to give you one where there's only one good choice. The real world might be like that, but I'll try to make it clear. What about part B? Put a box around the strongest acid. PKA goes in the same direction as pH. Lower is more acidic. Find me the strongest acid. Yeah, the one with eight H's. The one with the most H is the strongest acid. Lowest PKA. Yes? 
there anything on exam two besides solubility, acid-based buffer, and then the thermodynamics, which we're going to talk about next week? I don't think so. We can look. Is this a multiple choice? Yeah, because otherwise it's not feasible for me to get it back to you in a reasonable amount of time. So yeah. Should I put typos on it this time? No. No, I'm going I'm to I'm do better. I'm going to do better. Let's see. Thermo. Thermo, thermo, thermo. Strong base. Weak acid. Lewis acid base. Buffer. 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 Solubility. Solubility, solubility. That's it. 7A and B. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, all right. I see a ratio and I see a buffer. What do I do? Yeah, now I do Henderson Hasselbach. Again, I don't like to be prescriptive, but I'm a really big fan of writing the equation you will use in its like blank form, straight off the equation sheet with nothing filled in yet. And then, and then asking like, what do I have, what do I need? Because sometimes it's less than you might think. Which part of this will I solve for to get the answer? Yeah, the ratio, and it's already there. All I need to do is get that part by itself. I don't need to know them individually yet. Do I know the pH? From question 6A, yep, it was what, five? Five. Come on. Pen's dying. We all are. A little bit every day. Sylvia Plath kind of thing. Anyone? Sylvia Plath? No? Fight Club? Sylvia Plath? Anyway, yeah. The PKA we selected, 4.76. Can I solve for that ratio? Yep. I will subtract 4.76 from both sides, then do 10 to the... You can see what you're going to play with by just using this. This is what you'll get. Total buffer concentration is 0 0.03. What are the concentrations of each one? Total buffer concentration means the sum of those two chemicals is that number. I got a sum and I got a ratio. Two equations, two variables. I do not see coincidence. I see providence. Matrix three, I think. One of the matrix morphines, one of the matrix. Uh, got the glasses. And it's very cool. It's not the same answer. So I haven't solved this yet. I have two equations, two variables. I got to plug one into the other and solve for it. I got to run it because I got to get us ready for lab. Um, this is the setup. And you plug one into the other, and if you want to now get an off star, so we can do it offline. Thanks. See you all soon. Thank you. What? I, I, that's the idea. I'm glad it's, it works at least a little bit. What um what makes it like that? General vibe or the stuff we do? Okay.
And you think that's good or not good? Okay, cool. Have you gotten a response from my note taker? No, I was gonna do that today, but I'm not scared of that. Um, it depends on how you want to do it. Some people are just going to do a bunch of trials and then do like average and standard deviation. That's sort of the easy answer. If you have... Yeah, basically what I want is for you to... Um, let me stop this. Um, I want you to 